There are some specific issues we'd like the NRC to address, to address, and those are, for example, what happens in the event there is a loss of cooling to a Holtec MPC canister, and what are the odds of that event happening? Specific odds. Uh, what is the risk of flooding? What is the specific risk for corrosion? What is the risk of fuel cladding failure? What is the risk of excessive pressure, either internal or external? What is the risk of criticality? What is the risk from thermal transients? And finally, what is the evaluated risk for terrorism and a terrorist attack on the facility? Now, the reason we're asking for that is because in American industry, there's a whole risk industry, the insurance industry, Risk management is a process that's standardized. And I, I put these two little flowcharts up here because they're from two separate risk management companies that are very prominent, but essentially they outline the same process. You identify the risk, you measure the risk, you examine it, and you identify what the likelihood of that risk occurring is. And what we're asking for today is that the NRC provide some type of proof that it's gone through this well, actuarial process. So let's identify the risk and measure the risks. What are the odds? And specifically, what are the odds of a not credible event? What does the NRC mean by that? How risky is it? So I'd like to remind the Petition Review Board that songs failed due to a radiation leak that was not credible. Um, and shortly after that, radiation leak when Edison shut down the San Onofre nuclear generating station, it granted Edison massive emergency planning exemptions. That meant that Edison could reduce its insurance liabilities. Then the burial or internment of the nuclear waste began at the independent spent fuel storage installation, which is essentially a beachfront nuclear waste dump. But weeks before Edison actually started interring or burying those canisters on the beach, they waited because they wanted the NRC to grant on-site and off-site insurance exemptions. These off-site insurance exemptions are extremely important because that meant Southern California Edison was no longer liable for radiation risks outside of the site perimeter. And this is important to the public because if you as a member of the public try and go and purchase radiation insurance or nuclear disaster insurance, it's simply not available. Not a single private insurer will offer civilian homeowners or renters protection against nuclear waste. In fact, it's unlawful. The US government insures us and that is essentially the way it is. But that was a change that was lobbied for by the insurance industry because the insurance industry knew that the risks of a nuclear incident and the consequences were essentially uninsurable. Uh, a second point I have is that I'd like to observe that the NRC has a history of ignoring flood risks. Uh, this is a letter from September 14 of 2012 from Richard H. Perkins of the Division of Risk Analysis for the NRC. And he said, quote, the NRC has been in possession of relevant, notable, and derogatory flooding safety information for an extended period, but failed to properly act on it. He then went on to say, concurrently, the NRC concealed this information from the public. And then he goes on even further to say, this concern involves a violation of law and is not related to a technical opinion or distinction, which is why he reported it to the Office of the Inspector General. We're concerned that the NRC's pattern of ignoring flood risks may be occurring at San Onofre. Uh, one example of a significant flood risk is that San Onofre is located in the middle of a tsunami inundation zone. Now, the operators of the plant, Southern California Edison, say we've got a great system for protecting against this. It's a 25-foot uh, seawall. What they don't tell you is that that wall is 15 feet on the western side that faces the water, and it's 25 feet down to a drainage ditch 
below the wall on the other side, which faces the nuclear waste dump, the independent spent fuel storage installation or ISFIC. Now, if we zoom in on the center of this map, we see a, a zoom on the San Onofre nuclear generating station. In that divot, that red notch there, it's basically in a floodplain and a tsunami inundation zone, which brings up very real risks of flooding. So for the Nuclear Regulatory Commission to say it's not credible is something that we really question. Another issue we question is the idea of what constitutes flooding, because when you have flooding with a tsunami, it's kind of a different animal. Tsunamis can carry in tons of dirt, mud, rock, and other debris. So the entire site could be covered in gravel, sand, or organic debris. And this is important because these canisters that are manufactured by Holtec that store the waste are convection cooled. Now, another issue uh, that recently made news just a couple of weeks ago is that the University of Copenhagen shows that sea level is going to increase faster than we thought it would quote, faster than previously thought because the water in the sea will expand as it gets warmer. We all know that water expands when it gets hot and they're predicting that the oceans are going to get warmer. So we have no reason to doubt that. But what's important is, is that sea level rise predictions, which are very important for San Onofre because it is in a flood area and the bottoms of those canisters are inches above sea level, uh, could be flooded sooner than we think. Finally, and these are my final two points, Songs is a legitimate military target under the rules of war. And I've put a hyperlink to that for those of you who, who want to look at this presentation online. And the reason for that is Songs is located on Camp Pendleton, a military base. Under the rules of war, it's perfectly legitimate to attack assets on a military base. Second, nuclear waste can be used to manufacture nuclear weapons. It's tremendously valuable stuff. In a sense, it's become a very valuable asset for foreign nations. And with that, I'd like to thank the Petition Review Board for its uh, careful concentration on, on our presentation today. And I'd like to turn it over to Mr. Blanche and Mr. Stewart for the remainder of the presentation.